all, my name is Spacer, and I'm back with another linguistics video. As a quick introductory note, I've noticed that this series has started to sort of devolve into me just going over some particular linguistics topic. So I guess that's what I'll be going with as of now. Anyway, today's topic is that of classifiers. First things first, what exactly is a classifier? A classifier can generally be defined as some sort of morpheme that categorizes a noun in certain syntactic contexts, with the exact form of the classifier depending on the semantics of the noun. This can be exemplified in the following sentence from Idigny. In this example, both yam and girl are juxtaposed with words meaning vegetable and human, thereby placing them into wider categories. The exact semantics of the classifications differ quite a bit between languages and the type of classifier used, more on that later, but common distinguishing points include humanness, inherent nature, and shape, among many, many others. Some culturally important concepts will also often have their own classifiers. Some nouns may not occur with classifiers, and some may also be used with a variety of different classifiers, which can alter the exact semantics of the noun phrase. They can often have a pragmatic role as well, which can be seen in the many different human classifiers in some Mayan languages used for different social situations. Going back to the Yedin example, this is what we'll simply call noun classifiers to distinguish them from the other types of classifiers yet to be covered. The second type we'll be looking at are numeral classifiers. These are likely the most well-known examples of classifiers in languages, being common in many East and Southeast Asian languages. The distinction here is that the classifiers occur after a numeral or other quantifying expression. This is in many ways similar to measure words found in English and other European languages, though here they function as sort of massifiers and focus more on the quantity of something, rather than just being used to count them. Verbal classifiers, as evident from the name, are classificatory verbal elements that most often encode the shape, form, animacy, and other related categories of the subject or direct object. This sort of system can be found in many Athabascan languages, which possess a whole host of these different verbal classifiers. There's also a subtype of these classifiers called suppletive verbal classifiers, which as you may expect, involve suppletion. An example of this can be seen in the suppletive existential verbal classifiers in Enga, where a different copula or copula-like verb is used for different nouns. Here, katenge, meaning stand, is used for men, trees, houses, or other reference perceived by the speakers to be large and strong, but petenge, meaning sit, is used for women, possums, pawns, or other nouns perceived to be short or weak. Now we have some more obscure classifier constructions. Genitive classifiers are used to specifically characterize a possessed noun in much the same way as noun classifiers. These are contrasted with relational classifiers, which also occur in possessive phrases. The key distinction here is that while genitive classifiers categorize the possessed noun, relational classifiers specify the particular relationship between the possessor and possessee. These tend to occur in languages that distinguish between alienable and inalienable possession, and almost always just occur with alienably possessed nouns. The semantic divisions here are also rather different than the earlier systems we looked at, distinguishing between consumability or edibility of the possessed by the possessor. Non-consumables are characterized by how the possessor acquired or owns the noun, and consumables on how exactly they're consumed. There are also locative classifiers, which are exceedingly rare and occur in adpositional phrases, classifying nouns in much the same way as verbal or noun classifiers, usually focusing on the shape or form of the noun. Another rarer form of classifier would be deictic or demonstrative classifiers. These occur with demonstratives, or other deictic words, and usually categorize nouns in terms of position or orientation. Finally, it's time to go over the uses of classifiers. While they can seem semantically redundant, they have a variety of interesting functions. They can be incredibly useful tools for disambiguation. A single lexeme can encode a huge variety of meanings, with the exact intended meaning for that given context being shown through the classifier. In addition to this, they have extensive anaphoric use, so in contexts where it's obvious what you're referring to, you can leave out the noun and just use a bare classifier construction. As a final note, Classifiers have some other fun uses through metaphorical extension, like how one rope-like verbal classifier is also used for general fast or abrupt movement in Navajo. Anyway, that's all for today. 
I hope you enjoyed this little dive into the wonderful world of classifiers. And this is Space Dirt, signing off. <laughs>